Hi there. Uh, mergers and takeovers, nearly always in the news, lots of uh, corporations deciding to become one in the process of either horizontal or vertical or lateral integration, for example. In fact, the reality is uh, slightly less optimistic. The majority of mergers and takeovers between businesses, between corporations, fail to achieve the expected cost and revenue benefits or synergies that are put forward to shareholders ahead of the merger or the takeover. So let's spend a few minutes thinking about why that might be the case. One of the key reasons why mergers, many mergers and takeovers fail is because of debt. There are often huge financial costs of funding a takeover, especially if you're buying a business worth many billions of dollars or pounds. And the deals to, to, to allow this merger or takeover to happen may rely heavily on loan finance. And that can leave a big level of debt which, uh, which needs to be repaid and which is tough to repay if the merger and takeover doesn't achieve the cost and revenue benefits. A second major problem with uh, companies coming together, integrating, is the, the problems of integrating systems. So businesses might have extremely difficult, uh, different uh, sorry, technology systems that are expensive and uh, quite difficult to, to bring together. A really good example is in the slide there, it's eBay and Skype. So eBay bought Skype for $2.6 billion in 2005, only to sell the company four years later for $1.9 billion. And the key reason for that was they, were, they found it really tough to integrate their technological systems successfully and quickly. The share price can also be affected negatively by a takeover. So the need, for example, to raise fresh equity through a rights issue uh, to fund a deal can have a, can have a significant negative effect on the company's share price. Over the three to five years after a merger takeover deal, on average, the share price of the acquiring company company that's buying the other company tends to fall. Fourth key point is, is really important, culture clashes. So many mergers just don't achieve uh, the enhanced shareholder value because of, because of clashes of corporate culture, priorities and also clashes between personalities uh, within the business. Now, these clashes mean there's a failure to find the all important synergy gains. What's really important to stress in evaluation is that there's often a, a cultural incompatibility, particularly when you're going to merge or take over between two companies from different countries. Fifth point is, uh, is really quite significant. So a business uh, that becomes bigger may actually lose some customers who prefer to be buying from the smaller, perhaps more independent, slightly more approachable business. So you might, for example, get a small chocolate company or a craft beer business that is swallowed up by a big industrial confectionery or brewing conglomerate. And the original consumers of the products don't really like that. They prefer to buy from the smaller, well-known brand. And they don't want to buy goods and services from the bigger company. And we often see, for example, some skilled workers deciding to leave because after the takeover, there's a loss of human capital. They prefer, again, to work with a bit more autonomy and purpose for smaller businesses. Point six is critical. In many merger and takeover, especially when companies get involved in a bidding war, uh, we see, with the benefit of hindsight to be fair, we see something called the winner's curse. Now the winner's curse is when a business pays over the odds to get that all important 51% market share and ends up with little, very little gain, if at all, in the long run. A good example of this was the, the, just the doomed takeover of ABM AMRO by World Bank of Scotland in 2007. Uh, management hubris, management ego caused them to spend massively over the odds for a business and they ended up having to sell it uh, for virtually nothing uh, a couple of years later. Um, bad timing is another key factor. Mergers and takeovers that take place towards the end of a boom uh, can often be damaging for both businesses, not least because uh, the valuations become out of kilter, out of equilibrium. You end up paying way more than you expected to do. So there are many reasons why mergers and takeovers fail to achieve the, the shareholder returns. Indeed, although we do see big mergers and takeovers, many don't actually happen in the end. And you'll be familiar, particularly if you did A2 Micro this year, that there's also been a significant increase in the number of demergers, demergers between firms. Now we cover that in a separate topic video. So just, uh, just search, type in demerger into our YouTube channel and you'll see a video on that. Okay, so these are some of the key reasons for failed mergers and takeovers. Thank you.